Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's video is not for everyone because I know not all of you are using SQL Server as your backend, but a good number of you are, and I've gotten asked this question a lot. So today we're going to talk about the differences in SQL syntax between Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Today's question comes from Victor in Livonia, Michigan, one of my Platinum members. Victor says, how do I run a query for orders that occurred after January 1st of this year in SQL Server? I transferred all my tables from Access to SQL Server, and when I use that SQL statement in SSMS, which is the SQL Server Management Studio, it doesn't seem to work. I get an incorrect syntax error. What should I be doing instead? Well, Victor, there are some differences in the SQL language between Access and SQL Server, just some minor differences. The overall structure of an SQL statement is basically the same, but there's some little differences. Let's talk about them. First of all is the way that you format strings. In Access, we use double quotes, but in SQL Server, you use single quotes for your strings. Dates are formatted differently too. In Access, we put pound signs or hashtags or octothorps or whatever you want to call them around date values. But in SQL Server, again, we use a single quote. The wildcard characters are different too, right? Access uses an asterisk, whereas SQL Server uses a percent sign and the single character ones are different as well. In Access, we have Booleans and we use true and false, whereas in SQL Server, that's a bit value, so it's a one or a zero. You can use one and zero in access, but technically in access, it's negative one and zero. So it's a little trickier. So in access, I usually stick to true and false. But if you do upgrade to SQL Server, you got to remember it's now one and zero. Concatenation is different. If you want to do some concatenation in your SQL strings in access, we use ampersands and double quotes. But in SQL Server, it's plus signs and single quotes. So again, it's all these little things that tend to throw you off. And there are some different things, which I'm not going to go into all the details in this video. Uh, functions like is null, nz, if, they either don't exist or they behave a little differently. Um, SQL Server may be case sensitive based on how your database is set up. Usually it's not, but sometimes it can be. Parameters and subqueries are also handled slightly different in SQL Server. These are more advanced topics. So let's say I'm here in my tech help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to. And let's make a query. Let's go to create. Query design, I'll be honest, even I've been doing this for 30 years and I still like using the access query designer. And then once I get my query built in here the way I want it, then I'll switch over to SQL view and then work on the SQL that way. Um, simple things, yeah, simple things I'll write by hand. But let's say we want to do customer table, right? And I want the customer ID, the first name and last name. And let's do a different couple of different things here. Let's say I want the customer sense. I want this to be uh, after uh, one, one, 2001. Okay. And let's say I want the state is Florida. So F L and that should be good enough for now. All right. So run that. Okay. That's what I got. Let's take a look at what the SQL is. All right. There's the SQL. Now let me zoom in so you can see a little better here. Now, if you know me, I like to get rid of all the extraneous stuff. And since I only have one table in here, I can get rid of all these customer T's. We don't, it just makes it harder to read. If you got multiple tables, you got to leave these. Okay. All right. From customer T. And again, access tends to put way too many of these parentheses in here. We don't need all of these. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. Get rid of that. Get rid of these. Sometimes you need the parentheses. Sometimes you don't. And in access, you don't really need that trailing semicolon. So I tend to get rid of that too. All right. So this is my SQL statement in access. And so now to change this, actually I can get rid of this too. Can I get rid of that? Get rid of that. There we go. So to change this to SQL, what I would have to do is just replace these with single quotes and also replace these with single quotes. Now this is a real simple one. Okay. If you have a lot more complex SQL statements, there are some conversion utilities online. In fact, Access User Groups has a great one online. All right, SQL Converter right here. Here's the address. I'll put it in the links down below. All right, so let's say you got your Access SQL. Just paste it in here. Whoops, that's the URL. That's not the SQL statement. Let me go grab that. All right, copy that back over here. All right, let's paste it in. Okay, you want TSQL. That's for SQL Server. And then just hit Convert. All right, it gives you a little thingy here. Wait for the conversion. 
And there you go. Okay. Now it rewrites it. It puts each field on its own line. That This is perfectly fine for SQL server. It doesn't matter. But you can see it made the little changes right there. Okay. So you can use this too. You can also switch to different modes like VBA. You can go back and forth. Right. There's the VBA for it. And this is handy if you want to throw this into like a do command, you know, dot run SQL or, or an execute command. Okay. This is also one of those areas in which chat GPT really works well. Um, I'm, I'm hit or miss right now with whether I like chat GPT for writing code because it does some simple things good, but as far as like complex programming, no, but it's really good for converting SQL statements. All right. So I'll come down here. All right, please. Yes. I always start with please. I'm, I'm polite to the AI because you know, one of these days they're going to be ruling us. So they'll remember all this stuff. So please convert the following, uh, access SQL statement to SQL server. All right. And then I like to hit shift enter a couple times and then paste it in and then press enter and it should rewrite it for us. Then it even tells you what you have to do. Okay. And it's reminding us of the differences in the way that SQL server handles dates with the, uh, the ISO format, which I recommend. If you're not sure what the ISO format is, I'll put a link to that down below as well. But as you can see, it did a really good job of rewriting that code for you, that SQL statement. And you can go back and forth, right? ChatGPT is really good for converting code that you've already written that you know works to a different language. I use it all the time for doing like VB stuff and JavaScript because I use JavaScript on my website a lot. And I'm like, I'm not, JavaScript syntax is sometimes tricky, especially since it's case sensitive. So it always throws me up there. All right, if you want to learn more about SQL, especially with SQL Server and Access Together, I have a whole seminar on it. There's the link right there. I also teach you how to create something called a pass-through query, which is where you can make queries in Access that will actually run on the server, which makes things a whole lot faster. Because if you don't, then Access has to pull all the records down from the server and do the, the data crunching locally. But with a pass-through query, you're basically saying to the server, hey, you know, take these 5,000 records and give me the three that I want and just send me those. All right, but you got to write the pass-through query for the server. So it's got to be an SQL server format. So it's tricky, and I do cover that in lesson four of the seminar. I also have a language seminar on SQL, the language. There's a three-part series. Part one is all about select statements and where conditions and order by clauses and all that stuff. Part two is about action queries, and part three is about manipulating table design. And a little while ago, I released this guy, the Access AI Query Builder, where you can, in English, tell Access what you want from your data. And it will send it up to ChatGPT and bring down the actual query for you. And you can easily rewrite this to work with SQL Server as well. So that's about it. That's going to do it for today's tech help video. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. 
But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.